All right, let's uh, let's review piecewise functions, shall we? It's been a while since we talked about this. Uh, I want to focus just the first part of this on how to graph this function correctly. Because a lot of the times we were doing piecewise functions earlier in the year, these constraints, these domains, were uh, inequalities. Now, technically, I guess this is an inequality as well, but uh, it, it's a bit of a bizarre one that we're not used to seeing. Now, my suggestion at the beginning of the year for graphing piecewise functions was to plug in the number that you see here, regardless of whether or not we were including it or not. Uh, with, a, with a piecewise that looks like this, though, it's, it, it's a little bit of a different approach. Here's what this is saying, uh, if we can interpret this. What they're saying is this function has a value of negative 3 when x equals 3. So pretty simply, if we go to where x is 3 and we give it a value of negative 3, that means there's a point down here at 3, negative 3. Now, this inequality, and yes, this is an inequality, uh, is saying if x doesn't equal 3, then we're graphing this, which is what? That's a line, okay? It's a line that has a y-intercept of 8, and it has a slope of negative 1. So if I do that, I'm going to graph that. Here's my slope of negative 1. You can see me slowly kind of drawing this in. Here's the thing. When I get to where x is 3, this function is not defined. The function is not defined. Listen to the words. Not the limit. We haven't even talked about that yet. But the function is not defined where x equals 3, at least not along this line. So I'm going to put an open hole right there in the graph, and I'm just going to continue drawing this slope of negative 1 through the rest uh, of this coordinate plane. So this is how we would graph this piecewise function uh, to begin with. Again, we're not even really looking at the limit right now. But a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, ideas, first of all. Uh, if I just want to know, let's say, what is the value of when f is 2, right? We're evaluating this piecewise function, where f is 2. Where does that fall? Under what domain? Does that fall under this domain? No. This domain is only saying x equals 3. This domain is essentially saying everything else but not including 3. So this value of 2 falls under the domain of this function, so the value, or that piece of the function, should I say. So that value is 6. Okay? If we look at this magical number where, F, uh, where x is 3, this is the only domain that that falls under. And the value of the function there is negative 3. Again, listen to what I'm saying. It's the value of the function is negative 3 when x equals 3. I'm not using the word limit yet. Okay? So here comes, the, uh, here comes the crucible. Here comes whether or not we understand this or not. What is the limit as x approaches 3 for this function? This is where things get weird, because remember what we talked about in class. What is a limit? A limit is an anticipated value. It is not the value of the function. It is the anticipated value of the function. And we have to approach this from both sides. So I'm going to try this, kind of flying by the seat of my pants here for a second. But if I start on the left, if I start here, and I start working towards 3, where x is 3, from the left, and I stop right before I get to 3, what would I expect that output to be? What do you want to say? What's this right here? This is where y equals 5. You would want to say, well, I think it's going to be 5. Now, the value of the function when x equals 3 is negative 3. But that's beside the point. I hope I emphasized that enough in class. Let's go back. If we're evaluating this limit from the right, so as x's approach 3, from the right. What number are these two red lines converging upon? They are converging upon a value of 5, which means the limit as x approaches 3 is 5. We don't say that it doesn't exist. It does exist. Both of these red lines are approaching 5. That means the limit is 5. It doesn't matter that this point is actually located down here. That is totally irrelevant. The value of the function, 
the value of the function when x equals 3 is irrelevant to us. It's only about what we would anticipate the value to be as we approach 3. That's giving us this 